This is a siphon coffee brewer, one of the most interesting and visually appealing ways to make coffee. But is it worth it? Let's find out. Hello, my name is Stephen Holm and I'm with Homegrounds. We make videos and write articles to help you brew and enjoy better quality coffee right at home. Before I hop into this video, I'm gonna make a teeny, teeny, tiny little request. Please, if you wouldn't mind subscribing to our channel, liking this video, leaving a comment. It seems small, but all those things really help our channel and help us be able to make videos just like this. That is it, I'm done. Okay, moving on to the Siphon Coffee Brewer. Now, if you've seen these before, you've probably wonder, how the heck does that work and how does it make coffee? Well, let me kind of go over the science of how these work. You see, Siphon Coffee Brewers work via siphoning. Ah, just kidding, that's not it. Well, I mean, they do work via siphoning. But what's gonna happen in here is we have two chambers. The bottom chamber, we're gonna bring water to a boil in. And when we set the top chamber on top and form a seal right here, the vapor pressure from the water boiling is going to force the water up into the top chamber where you are going to add your coffee, let it brew, and then as soon as you remove the heat source from the bottom chamber and this cools down, the brewed coffee is going to vacuum back down to the bottom chamber. And as long as you have a filter in there, you have filtered coffee ready to brew. It's a very basic way of explaining it. I'm sure there's more sciencey ways to do that, but that's not coming from me. Now we're gonna be talking about how to brew with the siphon, a recipe that I like using, and then any pros and cons with this brewer. So before we're doing that, let's talk about the equipment you need to use in order to brew coffee with a siphon. First off, very surprisingly, you actually need a siphon brewer, like this one. This is the Hario TCA5. There's a five cup siphon brewer and they make a couple different sizes. You can tell it's well made. Hario makes great products and so I wouldn't doubt the quality of any of their siphon brewers. You have a stand here, which is going to hold your bottom beaker. Are these beakers? Your bottom glass thingy. And then you have this upper glass portion, which is going to sit in there with a rubber seal. We have a lid and then we also have a couple other siphon specific things. First off, you need a filter. This is a cloth filter, which has been sitting in some water in order to sort of get it clean here. You have this chain here. It's going to go down through the bottom. On the end of the chain is this little hook that hooks onto there. And now you've got a filter set in place. Last thing you need for a siphon brewer is a way to heat the bottom glass chamber. The one that came with this siphon brewer was this alcohol wick burner. You fill this bottom portion with denatured alcohol, I believe is the best way to do it. There might be a couple other ways. I quickly learned vodka doesn't work. I don't know why. As soon as I got this, I was like, oh, what do I have that's flammable over here? Oh, how about vodka? So I poured a bunch of vodka in here and it wouldn't work and uh, I gave up. But I know that denatured alcohol will work well in this, but I didn't really want to use one of these anyways because I opted to use a butane burner. You would fill this with butane from the bottom. It has a knob here to release some gas and then boom, you got a flame. This one in particular is made by Blue Fire. I've really enjoyed this one, it's worked out really well. Now besides siphon specific equipment, you're also going to need your usual coffee brewing gear. Coffee, a way to grind it ideally because we should be grinding fresh right before brewing. You need water and possibly a way to heat that water before putting it in here. And that's because these are pretty inefficient versus I have an electric kettle that I can heat up water in, so I'd rather just use that for as much of the heating as possible, and then just use this for the final sort of brewing stages. Next, you need a way to stir. Um, yeah, you need a way to stir. I should probably have one. Okay, this is the included scoop slash 
stir that comes with this siphon brewer. You can also use your usual spoon. The bamboo paddles that people use for pour overs works really well. Whew, I'm out of breath. Just from walking down the stairs, Jesus. Or I've seen people use a chopstick. Just any way that you're able to get in here and stir along the sides of this top chamber. Oh, and lastly, obviously a scale to weigh everything out. All right, so I am going to heat up my water, get my coffee ready, and do my best to talk while brewing a siphon, which should be interesting. All right, so our water is just about ready. I have already ground the coffee. We are using a one to 15 ratio of coffee to water. 40 grams of coffee grind on a slightly finer than medium setting. And then now that our hot water is ready, I'm going to take it and before putting it in here, I'm actually going to pour it on top of the filter. It's recommended to submerge the filter in hot water for a couple minutes before brewing just to get it sort of preheated and any stuff like oils or whatever out of it. Now, since I'm using the five cup siphon, it has markings going up to five cups on the side. I found that that's pretty much exactly 600 milliliters or 600 grams of water. So I'm just gonna pour right up to there. And that is all the water that we will need. And we are also done with the scale, but I'm gonna keep mine out to use it as a timer. Now the fun part when we get to play with fire. As always, when using something like this, uh, use your head, be safe, be cautious, do smart things. Boom. We're gonna turn that up fairly high. And now you don't want to create a seal quite yet with the top chamber. We wanna wait until that's just starting to boil and then we'll pop it on. And right about now is a good time that I like to get my filter all set in the top chamber. And you can just set this in there at an angle like that. It's a little stressful, but um, it should stay. Now I'm starting to see some boiling, so I'm gonna go ahead and create this seal here. You don't need a ton of force on this. Just the slightest twisting and pressing down will be more than enough. And here we go. Now I like to wait to pour my coffee in until all the water's up. You can already have your coffee in there and allow the water to rise up, but I find that that allows more of the fines to sort of seep into the cloth filter and clog it up a little bit more. If you add the coffee afterwards, that won't be as bad. So now that most of the water has flowed to the top, there will always be a little bit left at the bottom. Turn your heat down slightly, but not all the way yet. We just wanna keep that bottom chamber warm, but we don't need the heat all the way up. We're going to add our coffee and start our timer right away. Be sure to give that a nice stir. Make sure that you are getting everything saturated. We're gonna let this sit for one minute and then stir again and take the heat off. It's a pretty quick brewing method. Now I will note that I have seen some people that like to take the temperature of the water up top and make sure it's at a certain point before adding coffee grounds. That's great if you think that'll help. I didn't notice any huge difference there because the water is always gonna be just below boiling at a temperature that I like brewing coffee with, so I don't worry about that too much. But if you wanna get really in depth with it, feel free. We are already coming up on one minute, so I'm going to give this a quick last stir, shut our heat off, and let this start doing some magic. And now as the bottom chamber cools down, we have water flowing from the top through our cloth filter back down to the bottom, leaving behind all of those coffee grounds on the top so you have a nice clean cup. Now we end up with a nice mound of coffee here at the top. Everything has transferred down to the bottom chamber and we are done brewing. Simply take the top portion. It's a little hot, but if you grab near the top, it is manageable. Place it in our upside down lid here and that'll hold on to it nicely. And now we have a cup of siphon coffee. So I'm gonna pour myself a cup here. And while we wait for it to cool down, because 
this is going to be pretty hot. Let's talk about some pros and cons of the Siphon Brewer. Our first pro, pretty obvious, it looks really cool. Like having this on my shelf, I feel pretty legit when people come over and they're like, what is that? And I say, oh, that's a coffee brewer. You wanna see me use it? And they're like, uh, yeah. And then boom, I have new friends cause I'm really cool. It's just an overall experience, both to use, to watch, to enjoy, to show off to people. It's fun. Another pro to the siphon is the flavor. You're combining a full immersion brewer with a cloth filter. And so you're getting a cup that is both clean and complex, but also has some nice body, some nice mouthfeel to it. And it's definitely a different drinking experience than most other manual brew methods. But there we move on to the cons. And I have quite a few with this brewer. The first being that it is all glass. I have broken many a Chemexes in my day, a couple other glass brewers, and so I usually opt not to use glass because I don't see any benefit with it other than that it looks cool. And on top of it being glass and fragile, these are expensive. It's like 80 bucks for a siphon brewer. So if you break one of these, yeah, you can buy just this bottom portion as a replacement part, but that's still pretty expensive. Another thing I don't love about this brewer is the cleanup. And I'll show you why. I need a way to get it out. So I just do that, which is nice. You get most of it, but we still got a bunch of coffee grounds in here. And then you have this darn filter that you definitely need to rinse out really well. And you need to keep this maintenanceized. I am not the biggest fan of cloth filters because there's a lot of maintenance with them. You have to really wash them well. And then if you want to store them for long periods of time, it's recommended to put them in like a plastic bag in your fridge. And I just don't like that. There are options to use paper filters with the siphon brewer. You have to buy this separate system like this that encloses a paper filter in it. And I would probably opt for that if I was going to be using this brewer every day which I won't be, but that is a solution. And then another thing with cleaning is this thing. You can't like get in there. There's coffee grounds everywhere right now. You can't get in there unless you have like this long brush that you can rub around the sides. I don't own one of those. So I've just been kind of filling it with soap and water, shaking it around, hoping for the best. It's just, it's not easy to clean. It's not my favorite. I don't, I don't like cleaning it. Another thing that people may not like about this brewer is how hands-on it is. You really have to be standing there and be interactive with the entire brewing process, which some people may really enjoy that. They want to be able to control every aspect and you know maneuver things with their hands, but other people just want to brew a cup of coffee. And yeah, you can just generalize that to maybe those people don't want to use manual brewing methods and that's fine. But for some people, this may be too much even compared to a pour over. And then I have one big thing that is the reason that I won't be using this brewer every day. And that is, it is stressful. Like I am waking up early in the morning and I want a cup of coffee and I am fine making a pour over. I can kind of stand there and like try to wake up and make that but I do not want to handle all of these fragile glass things that I have to balance carefully and hope, see, even right now I hate that. And I do not want to have to wake up and go through this stressful situation just to get my coffee. Now, even though I just talked about me not wanting to brew with this all the time, let's at least taste the coffee and see how it is. I mean, it does taste really good. It has some really nice body to it that you wouldn't get out of most other manual brew methods. It has a lot of complexity, a lot of flavor going on. And so it does make a good cup of coffee. And for some people, that right there might be worth everything that I just talked about that I don't love about it. If this is worth it to you, that's great. So that is the Siphon Brewer. I hope that this video was helpful for you if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you for watching, and until next time, happy brewing. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not doing that. That's gonna be hot as f
It says LaCroix Cherry Blossom. And uh, it just tastes like Tootsie Roll. Uh, not sponsored, but LaCroix. Please, please sponsor me. And then, boom, I have new friends because I'm really cool. Uh. 